We'll now discuss the natural and step response of circuits consisting of a resistor and an inductor. As we know, when there's current flowing through an inductor, there's energy stored in the magnetic field resulting from that current. The natural response describes math mathematically the decay of that energy as the current dies out. Consider this first circuit here. We have a current source with a uh, parallel resistor and a switch that has been closed for a long time. Closed for a long time means that any changes in current and voltage have died out and the current has been constant. So given that the voltage across an inductor is equal to L di dt, there is no voltage across this inductor, therefore there's no current flowing through this resistor. In other words, this inductor has shorted the resistor out of the circuit, shorted this resistor out of the circuit, and all of the current will be flowing through that inductor. And we say the inductor is acting as though it were a short circuit. Now, at t equals zero, the switch opens, removing the current source and leaving then this inductor and resistor in parallel. Whereas before the switch is opened, the voltage across the inductor was zero, it was a short circuit. Immediately after the switching, the voltage across the inductor is no longer zero. In fact, the voltage across that inductor in this case would be the voltage across the resistor, which would be the initial current times the resistance. And you'll notice that the current is flowing in this direction, therefore there will actually be plus to minus. The opening of this switch will cause the inductor to to induce, or a the inductor will induce, a voltage reference plus to minus to, to oppose the change in current. All right, so our initial current, I, can be found from the fact that the current does not change instantaneously in an inductor. To put it another way, the current at immediately after the switch is opened is equal to the current immediately before it was opened, or I of zero plus is equal to I of zero minus, which in this case is simply I sub S. Now again, depending upon what book you're using or where you're reading in the literature, frequently that initial current is specified as I naught, as, as we saw before the initial voltage was V naught. The fact that the current doesn't change instantaneously is an effect of this voltage-current relationship. An instantaneous change in current would mean that we had some finite delta I in zero seconds. Such a change would induce an infinite voltage, and of course there's no such thing as an infinite voltage, so there is some time required for the current to change. Now with a circuit in this condition then, the current slowly dies out or dies out over time as the energy in the inductive coil, the energy that was stored in that magnetic field of the inductor, is dissipated through the resistor. The step response, as uh, demonstrated in these two circuits down here, the step response describes the changes in current resulting from a sudden change in the source supplying the current. So for example, here we have a circuit that for t less than zero, the switch was open. We have a voltage source, and at t equal, the voltage source connected to the resistor, but was open circuit. At t equals zero, the switch closes. So prior to the switch closing, the current here was zero. When the switch closes, the current still remains zero because you can't instantaneously change the current. And a voltage would be induced that would be opposing that current. In, that, in this case, the voltage that would be induced would equal the voltage source here. We'll talk more about that later. The initial current was zero. The switch closes. The current starts to grow, and we'll see that that current grows exponentially. In this circuit here, we have a situation where for T less than zero, the inductor was connected to this voltage source and established an initial current. At t equals zero, the switch closes. That current remains the same instantaneously because you can't instantaneously change the current. But then the currents and voltages change until this goes to a new steady state with a new 
current source. And again, we'll talk about the details of that later on.